this is actually the sickest thing, like the sickest storyline. I couldn't have like a better exit. No one could possibly ask for a better exit. Really exciting. I came in with three big stories I wanted to tell. Um, one was Carol's cancer. One was a very big story for the Carters. The Carters themselves and a very big story for them that hasn't even started yet, that's to come. Um, and Killing Lucy Beale. And the reason for it was because the Beals are the first EastEnders family. In my head, they're, they're the successors to the Fowlers. They also are part of the Fowlers. Um, so for me, in this year, building up to the 30th anniversary of the show in February next year, um, I wanted a big, epic story that put the Beals at the center of the show, that put Ian, the, uh, the show's only original character, at the centre of the show. We were filming Christmas dinner at the Mitchells and you could see various phones going off and people were having a sly little look, we're not supposed to have our phones on set, having a sly little look. You could see that sort of like moment's thought of, oh, what have I done? Um, and then I sort of looked around, I could see it was the whole family, so I thought, oh, that's looking like a storyline. Um, and sort of Dom obviously went and told Hetty first, which had to. Um, and then we all sort of like went up there individually and found out what was going to be happening. When he told me though, I was sort of unable to process what you were saying because of the initial shock. I was, I was surprised, um, to be honest, because I, I just didn't, didn't see it coming at all. Um, I sort of just made sure he was sure that he was doing the right thing and everything. And he started explaining all the reasons behind it and everything. And I thought, Do you know what? Yeah. This is going to be massive. Obviously, when I got told that I was going to die or get killed, um, Dom said, like, how do you feel about playing dead? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's going to be absolutely fine. I just fall asleep. But it was actually genuinely probably one of the hardest things I've had to do here because it's so morbid. I think Hetty found it really difficult, actually. She was very nervous about being a corpse, which is interesting because, you know, it, the, you have to be still. And I think she found that, you know, difficult. And it wasn't, it, although it was a nice sunny day, it wasn't that warm. So, you know, you're always, I think you're anxious and worried about keeping warm, not shivering, being still, not blinking, not swallowing, not breathing, you know, not, and all of that. And I think it's quite a, it's, it's quite a, a, a difficult thing for an actor to do. It sounds bizarre, it should be the easiest thing in the world, but actually, you know, you try lying really, really still for half a minute or however long a camera's on you and not being, and of course, it's like not laughing in church, isn't it? The minute you think, oh, I mustn't laugh, you do. So um, I, I think she found it quite difficult. When Ian sees Lucy for the first time and I get revealed through the curtains and um, they told me, they were like, the first um, time that Adam's actually going to see you is the first and only take that we're going to do. So I panicked and I went into like, almost like a panic attack because during the filming, when they said action, my eyes just kept quivering and I couldn't stop them, it was uncontrollable, and my palms were sweating, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm literally macking up the scene so much to him right now, and they didn't do another take, and I was like, no. I tried to keep all the big emotional scenes as real as possible by not doing too many takes on them, and just allowing the, that first instinctive take to be the one that we predominantly use. So, um, I know she was kind of, that was her first experience of doing it. But so by the time she, we got to the common, I think she was, a, she was less stressed about it. And it is a really difficult thing to do. People just wouldn't think about it that way. And I didn't. So, lying in a coffin scaring me a little bit. You've got to get actors out of their comfort zone, don't you? You know, we're not making, we're not making play bus. If it was all lovely and sweet and cuddly, I've said this before, but if it was all lovely and sweet and cuddly, then that's a different show. That's not EastEnders. I wish I could have just done all my live things and not have to do the pickups and then all my dead stuff. There was one week in particular when it was, Lucy's alive, Lucy's dead, Lucy's alive, Lucy's dead. It's just really hard to get your head in the right place and like everything being really emotional and Lucy losing her head a bit and then being dead and then going back 
and I'll do it in the same day as well. And then just when you thought she was really, really dead, she was back. She's alive. <laughs> it does confuse you a little bit. <laughs> It's been really a performance block in terms of the actors. Um, they've had to go to some quite dark places, I think, in order to reproduce um, the level of emotion that they obviously have to find when you're dealing with watching a family in shock and in grief. Um, I've been working really, really closely and really intensely with the actors to, to really find that, and it's been extraordinary. It's been one of the hardest things I've ever done. Dad. Someone like Ben, um, he, he responds really well to a kind of to physical notes. So I found that I would sort of say to him, OK, if, if it was a scene where he had to be very upset, I would say to him, go for a run. And I'd make him run around the square or run around the set or run around the studio or whatever. And, and then just before we went into a take, you know, he'd literally land on set and then we'd call action. So he'd sort of like be all hyped up and agitated. It worked. You came back at one point, I sent him back out. <laughs> Whereas Adam doesn't need to be told to go for a run. He, he, he can just, you know, he's got it all there. He, what he does is he, he sort of imaginatively engages with what's happening and the tears happen. But for Adam, what I had to do was be very specific with him and try and um, give him very specific things to think about so that we, we didn't just get a sort of generalised emotional performance from him. The body of a young woman was discovered earlier today. We believe it's your daughter, Lucy. I mean, there have been moments where I've been really trying to hold it together during a take so that I can keep, you know, my objectivity and um, and make sure that I've got all the shots that I need to tell the story. And then after, you know, then I'll call cut or just about manage to call cut and dissolve into a bit of a mess. So it's been really exhausting, really exhausting, but really wonderful as well to see actors, particularly people like Adam, who've been in the show for years and years and years. Um, I mean, I think, I've always thought he's a wonderful actor, but to be given some material to show that has been just fantastic. <laughs> this has been some of the most emotional stuff I think I've ever done. I, I don't think I'm, I'll ever do anything more emotional than this. Um, I've literally spent days crying, entire days. Um, and you, you finish at the end of it. And you are absolutely exhausted. You've got nothing left. And then you have to go on, learn your lines, come back in and do it again the following day. Lucy's death is a game changer. It's going to change a lot of relationships on the square. And there's going to be some surprising reactions to her death, good and bad. Um, ultimately, it's a bloody good story. Um, so viewers should tune in because it's not going to be predictable, and it will it will shock, it will entertain, it will move. More than anything, I think this isn't a story that's come from here. This is a story that's come from here. Before you even ask, no, I haven't got a clue. I do not know who did it. You know, there are various people that they're kind of putting into the frame, but as to who's actually done it, I've got no idea. Only a handful of us know who did it. We do know who did it. Can I ask and can I speculate and will you tell me? And he was like, mm, we probably won't tell you, but you can guess at the end. Just wait till we finish our meeting and then, I was like, OK, can I guess now? So yeah, hang on. I do know one thing. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is one small-ish thing. Oh. Hmm, very clever, and I was like... Who didn't do it? Stacy, she's not around. That's not that helpful, is it? <laughs>